I have to behave. And right. And we're live. What's going on, YouTube? You know it is. It's your boy, Big Tank Hank. Coming at you with a Saturday live stream, the Aqua Shop, and we're open for business. Today we have Joel Fernandez, fish transshipper. Hello, sir. How you doing? How are you, Hank? It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you Man, for having me in good. the show. And uh, thanks for everybody that, everybody that is watching. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. See who we got in the chat today. First in, first in how fish yarn tactics. Trevor Gregory, what's going on? Griffin Fish Room, I see you came in. Uh, Mary Page was first up there. Thank you all for coming through. Hey, y'all share this uh, video out. Let everybody know that we're going live right now. So, Mr. Thank Fernandez, you guys I'm for gonna, showing up. I'm going to let you uh, introduce yourself. Um, give them a brief background. I mean, it doesn't even have to be brief, however much you want to tell. But, you know, like maybe where you grew up, uh, things you did as a youngster, uh, how you got into the hobby, and then we'll go on into uh, the meat of the subject. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, well, for everybody that don't know me yet, uh, my name is Joel. I go. Uh, I am a trend shipper here in Dallas. Um, I have. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a bit already. Um, I started it uh, about 2005 when I got my first uh, import license, and at that time I did a couple of imports for myself. And after that, uh, I stopped for a while. So uh, I came back, uh, I actually came to Dallas in 2013, and that's when I restarted it. But going back uh, many years back, I have, uh, I'm originally from Cuba. I was born in Cuba. Uh, I was there for seven years, and then uh, I traveled some other countries. I, I lived in Venezuela for 10 years. Uh, it's a beautiful country. And uh, from there, I moved uh, back. Uh, I'm here in the uh, United States down in Miami. So, I mean, my first uh, my first fish was a bit of fish that was given to me by my uh, older brother, my middle brother, uh, Ray. Uh, it was a red half moon beta. And um, I mean, I love the fish. Uh, I was so happy when I got it. I, I've never got a fish uh, just for myself. Uh, I always had a tank full of uh, uh you know community tank full of uh, uh, i don't know guppies or uh, platies and stuff like that but i never had like a special fish for me so for me that was uh, a very striking moment uh, you know in my life uh it was uh it was good i mean from there that's where i i actually got love for the uh for fish so after that i came uh, i came to united states um family owned uh, businesses i worked there while i was studying uh in high school uh very hard moments mm, you know didn't know the language back uh, back then i still don't know the language now but i go i go by it <laughs> after uh, many years and um but uh you know it's it, it was it was you know uh, racing in, in another country with another language and another culture. So it was kind of hard, even though I, I lived in, in Miami, which is basically uh, in a small Cuba already. Um, there in, my, in Miami, I went to, uh, to school. I went to a high school there. And uh, after right after high school, I, I had to uh, work uh, to support our family. Uh, my dad just uh, went uh, to business back to uh, Venezuela, and I stayed in this country alone by my with my uh, mom, and uh, you know I was I was with my mother for I don't know probably five seven years uh, at least. So it was it was pretty hard. I I did not go. I did not finish school. I only graduated from 12th grade uh, as a senior, uh, but I I didn't finish uh, school. Um, after that, I started it working um, when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe 19 or 20, I started working for a cable company. So now you say, hell, a cable company and fish had nothing to do. <laughs> well, uh, I worked, 
I, I worked in a cable company for 25 years. So it's, I, you know, I learned that and it, and it was my, my, uh, my career actually, uh, very good at it. You know, it's, I, I took a lot of education. I really liked the job back then was a lot easier than, than what it is now. Uh, so, you know, I met my wife when I was uh, 24 and, uh, we got married like two years after, uh, we got kids, uh, I got three kids. Um, you know, it's, it's just a ongoing, uh, uh, thing and since since uh the, the first day you know i i always kept tanks in my house i mean one at least one tank of all the times i had once i had uh in a, a house that we had in miami i i had uh that's what i started in 2005 i had a uh a back uh, um a shed full of tanks i'll probably have about 50 tanks in there and that's when i started it bringing in fish some of the fish I brought in from uh, uh, Asia, some others I buy, I bought from uh, uh, wholesalers in uh, in Miami, a friend of mine in Miami. And uh, that's when I was doing uh, a lot of the business uh, at that, that time. Obviously that was just hobby. Um, I didn't have, uh, you know, obviously the, 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 the knowledge at that time that there were people bringing in fish from other countries um i mean i knew it but i didn't know at the extent that they, they were doing it uh at that time i think it was 2000 2010 2010 uh i got my first couple of pairs of uh, guppies from uh thailand and i actually met the guy who brought it in because the guy was in miami so i, I met the guy and i started asking questions of how you know how you do this how this how that and um it was very interesting it was really very interesting so i went ahead and i got my license and since since that time i had my license all this many years uh imported license now i never used it uh until i moved to dallas and uh, the reason why is because people will say oh the license is cheap and it's easy to get and it is uh it's just that it's very difficult to put everything together. I mean, you have the uh, export guy, the fish, uh, the, the the shipping. Then you have when you get to the United States, you have the uh, the import charge, fish and wildlife, custom duties, all the paperwork. So actually, I, I've never had a, an opportunity uh, to do it. So on, uh, I believe it was 2000 and uh, I moved here in 13. So about, I would say uh, 14 or, yeah, 14, I would say 14, 2014, 2015, um, I decided I was gonna be, you know, wanna become a, uh, a trend shipper. So I talked to some of the guys in Thailand and Indonesia and they referred me to the trend shippers there. And uh, after, after we all talked and we all communicate, uh, you know, how we were going to do stuff. Then um, I, um, I got myself into it really hard. And luckily for me, and unfortunately for other people, uh, Hurricane Maria hit it, uh, South Florida uh, and uh, Puerto Rico. So unfortunately for them, they lost all of the fish because the outages were 15, 25 days. Uh, with no electricity, no water, you know, good water and stuff like that. So most of these people lost all the uh, all their stock. Uh, being a Spanish, you know, speaking, a lot of these people actually seek for me. And uh, that's where actually my business actually grew up. Uh, you know, I was doing probably the first week or so, I was doing one, two boxes of fish. And right after that happened, probably... Um, two months or so uh, after I started it, I was doing five and seven boxes of fish. So it, it really picked up really, really good after that. Uh, like I say, you know, fortunately for me and unfortunately for these people because they did suffer a lot. Yeah, it's that's how it is, unfortunately.
Yeah, I mean, in in business, a lot of times it's either it's either you will have to take the setback for somebody else to you know to make the comeback, or it's vice versa. Yeah, it's not it is it's not it shouldn't be looked at as anything personal because it's not like you did it, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So right after that, I think like four or five months into it. Uh, I really never, nobody knows exactly what happened to that Miami Trent Shipper, and uh, he disappeared. So me, speaking Spanish, English, I got all South Florida and the Caribbean. So as I say, you know, speaking Spanish, I talk to people in the Dominican Republic, Colombia, Brazil, Peru, uh, Costa Rica, Honduras, everywhere. So basically they actually wanted it to talk to me because they you know i i can speak their language and it's easy for them to communicate other than google translate okay most definitely most definitely so i mean and you were you were doing all this from dallas well yeah i started it i i was doing it from miami but i never actually imported from miami uh i only bought fish in miami from wholesalers in miami and in uh, out of miami uh but the first import was in 2014 uh 2014 here in dallas based on, on dallas and it was crazy because i didn't know anything about it i have my license i got i talked to everybody already in thailand and indonesia so i tell them okay so when is the day so they set up a day which i didn't know for saturday Obviously, Saturday, Fish of All Life is closed. Customs is closed. Everybody is closed. So I'm like, ah, okay, Saturday is fine. Perfect. Let's do it. I didn't know anything. So on Friday, around, I would say, 4.20 or 4 o'clock, I told my wife, babe, let's go by the airport. I want to actually talk to these people, you know, Fish of All Life, the inspectors, uh, and see how the procedure, because I've never done this. So I went with my wife and I knocked on the door of the uh, Fish and Wildlife uh, inspectors. And uh, I talked to one of them and he said, oh, yeah, sure, you can bring in the fish. When are you going to bring it? Uh, you need 72 hours notice in advance. <laughs> that was the first one. Oh. OK, so oh. I'm like, uh, well, uh, they're coming tomorrow <laughs> at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then he's like, oh, you know, that might not be possible. Oh, that will run you into overtime if we do. Let me talk to my supervisor and see how can we do this, if it's a possibility. I mean, first time, they don't know anything about me. I mean, they don't know if I'm legit or whatever. So I actually talked to the supervisor. Look, he didn't know anything. I have my license for so many years, and, and I thought that it was just bringing in and get it out. And he's like, no, there's procedure. You need to do uh, a declaration for Fish and Wildlife. We need to go inspect the shipment. And especially since these are going to be your first shipments, we need to inspect those to make sure that you're complying. Uh, you need to pay the fee in customs. And then I'm like, customs, where is that? Uh, how much do I have to pay? Uh, I'm like, holy crap, where I get myself into this? But, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason, I guess. So one of them, it was really, uh, really good uh, with me. And uh, he told me, okay, let's do this. I, I have to come tomorrow, so I will inspect it for you, okay? And no extra charge, just regular, regular time. And uh, I, I will tell you what you need to do. So he told me, okay, sit down in one of those chairs and download this application, whatever, I did it. And then he goes, submit all the documents that they told you that they gave you i'm like they haven't gave me no documents yet <laughs> and i'm like and he's like oh how am i gonna do this you have to do this 72 hours ahead and they don't give you anything yet i go well they're sending tonight the documents so i'll have to be able to do it tonight so i started inputting uh fish which i knew they were coming into the uh, declaration and the amounts and cost and all that and obviously first time things happens i never looked at the top left hand corner 
that is a clock counting your time. So I was there for like 25 minutes, putting numbers, getting everything there, trying to get everything. And then the counter started zero and erased everything and kicked me out. <laughs> 4 55 p.m. 4 55 p.m. I was I was like, oh, this is not, this is not. I'm like, can can this cannot be happening? So the guy goes, okay, listen, go home. You know where to go. You need to make sure that the clock does not run out. You know, you can reset it uh, and then resubmit everything. Submit it to me tonight and I will go ahead and uh, approve it. You know, send you on a, a message that is approved. I will inspect it tomorrow. And after I inspect it tomorrow, I'm going to send you an email with the uh, uh, the approval, the clearance from uh, Fish and Wildlife. And you will have to present that in uh, customs. I say, okay, thank you very much. So I went home. I did all the paperwork. Uh, he approved it. He went in the morning. He inspected the fish. Thanks, God. He did not charge me overtime because it was like $200 overtime per Ooh. hour, minimum, minimum two. Um, so I got it. I got the first import, one box. I was doing probably like 55 fish. I was so happy with 55 fish. I would not even, I would not even tell you how realized I was. I'm like, yeah. So out of those 55, probably 20 were mine. <laughs> oh. So, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. So I, I did, I did pay a lot for that first box, but actually that was actually what, what actually got me into it. Uh, that first box when, when I realized I can get it in here in the United States from those countries, I mean, I was driven. I really was. Uh, I started posting Facebook, uh, everywhere, uh, about trend shipping. Obviously the people from Indonesia and Thailand did a great job. They went ahead and they put all these, uh, uh, uh marketing together, uh, you know, uh, for me and stuff. So a lot of the sellers, a lot of the sellers, uh, tried, uh, me the second time. So I jumped from that one box to probably two boxes, uh, the second chance. And, uh, not even a month after, uh, that's when, uh, when I told Maria and Puerto Rico happened. So I was just, you know, four or five boxes, uh, uh, every two weeks. Then uh, after the fourth shipment, I incorporated it. Um, I incorporated it Thailand, and uh, Thailand, Thailand actually, the, the same thing happened with Thailand. But Thailand was very smooth because I already had everything done and everything ready because I was already doing uh, Indonesia for a while, um, and that's it. Since then, I've been doing every two weeks shipments from Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, I have, uh, I met Devante, I don't know, two, three years ago, and uh, we started doing uh, more business. Uh, shout out to Devante, great guy, my friend. Uh, I mean, he pushed me, he pushed me on to another countries, uh, and we started doing, we started doing Colombia, we started doing uh, Peru, uh, we're planning to do uh, Brazil, uh, um, Indonesia, Thailand. I mean, he's bringing probably every every other week with me uh, one or two boxes uh, of, of his own import. Uh, like I say, you know, it's it's been magical. I've been I've been blessed. To be honest, uh, I have um, I have a lot of business. It's my business actually is growing a lot. I have my son, which is not here with me now, but he's a great help. Uh, me and him, we do all the all the uh, all the trend shipping. I mean, it's we go from one box to 37 boxes every shipment now, especially from Indonesia. Oh yeah, I got a guy. I got in contact contact with a guy, or he got in contact with me in uh, during COVID that uh, they couldn't get any shipments into South America. So I started it doing uh, uh, Costa Rica. So anywhere between 25 to 35 boxes to Costa Rica every other week. 
that's that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, repacking, reoxygen, everything. I mean, it's 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 hard. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's 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 very stressful because you have a deadline. We receive the fish in the morning. The vet has to come in the in the very morning when we get it. Uh, he needs to inspect them and then uh, send the uh, the um, a health certificate to a USDA to be approved. And uh, once we get that, that approval, normally within that day, we have everything prepared, everything prepacked, everything repacked, reoxygen, everything ready and send it out on the same night. So, I mean, it is, it is a lot of work. And for the fish that uh, that are staying in the United States, because their they're goal, uh, trend shipping, tra what, it, what, what the actual trend shipper is the same as a freight forward. The only difference is that we keep the fish and we forward it to individuals. Instead of doing a whole shipment of 10, 20 boxes or three boxes for people, I'm able to send you one fish or a hundred fish. So okay, that's that's okay. what the trend okay. shipper is. Um, you know what we do. What we do is we get all the boxes with the fish, and we separated them by the name. And uh, after that, I call, I contact everybody. A lot of these people that already trust me, my 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 clients, my customers. I I cannot do anything without them. Obviously, uh, they have all the. Uh, uh, they have all me. I mean, you can reach me any time of the day and pretty much on the phone uh, all day long and all night long. I mean, I go to bed probably at one o'clock in the morning answering because the different times between the United States and Asia, you know, you have to be up uh, very late uh, in order to be able to do business with them over there, you know, to get everything coordinated. So when the fish arrives in the United States, they arrive in big boxes. Uh, you might have one fish. So... What I'll do is I have, I have like four or five tables with uh, um, styrofoam containers and I set up everything by name. So you can get one fish from X, Y, and C uh, seller and you can get another from A, B, and C. And I will merge them uh, together. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you. Um, so that's that's part of the, the the what i do that's my that's my uh uh my job i get everybody i put them together put them in boxes i mean if they need he packs he packs if not send it to people okay so are you getting boxes from one country come through to you and you, you can still send out to another country that's what I've been doing for the past three months. Cause see, I had in my head uh, outside the United States into you expedite within the United States. I never even pictured, you know, the the circle aspect. None, none of the trend shipper at this moment. None of them export other than Puerto Rico, uh, uh, Puerto Rico and Hawaii. Okay. And they are part of the United States, so it, it's very easy to just send there. It's just another, another, um, another uh, uh, city or state, whatever. Um, even though it's another country, uh, the same thing with Guam and uh, Virgin Islands. You can still send there. Uh, some of them need to have a permit. It's very easy for them to get, like Hawaii. It's very easy for them to get, but you need to send it with permits. If you don't send it with a permit, they might stop it and they might not let it go in. They return it to you. Okay. But okay. for exporting, uh, I'm sending to uh, uh, Peru actually next week about 20 boxes. Costa Rica, 36 boxes. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, I sent four boxes uh, last Thursday. Uh, this week and this next week, I'll probably have two. And uh, Barbados also. Uh, some of these countries do not need an export or import uh, export permit, but most of them need an import permit. Uh, Costa Rica, uh, Colombia, 
uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Costa Rica, uh, Mexico, and another country I cannot remember, they need a special permits. So you have to be, you have to have a, uh, a certified facility, USDA certified facility. That normally takes about a month. It took me four months to do it because I did it through COVID. It was hell and back. We and the patience, man. I the first time I sent, I sent in January, actually like March, right before COVID. I sent to Costa Rica a shipment. That was the first shipment that I did to Costa Rica, and then the guy contacted me during COVID, and he told me, "Oh, can we do a shipment in in uh, October?" So I say, "Yeah, of course, no problem. Just let me know." I mean, I always, I'm always good uh, with those uh, shipments. And then uh, he sent me the order. I went ahead. I did the purchase. I bring in the fish October the 8th. And those same fish were in my house from October the 8th, 2020, till January 30th. Because... So I did not have that certification back then. It was not needed in, in, in February. So when I when I started doing the shipment in, on, uh, on October, they needed that certification. So that's when I had to apply. October, November, December, and I got it by the end of January. And that's when I actually sent the first shipment to Costa Rica after COVID. So now I'm a certified facility. I can send anywhere in the world that I need that I want to and that they accept me. Uh, so it's I'm probably the only trend shipper right now out there that is that is doing export to other countries. I mean, big export to other countries. Uh, so dedication, okay. a lot of dedication, Man. a lot of hours, a lot of hours in uh, the phone and emails, uh, Facebook, Messenger, like, man, you would not believe in. So you have you have a standalone facility yourself that you can uh, lay the fish over, or is it like at your house? I do everything from my garage. I have a three-car okay. garage that I actually have half of the tanks in one side for uh, if I need to store fish or if I need to uh, keep them overnight, or you know, it all depends. And uh, the other half of the garage, I have uh, six to eight tables that I maintain the fish that is going in and out to United States. Man, look, this. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it is fascinating. I put a fish. Uh, I mean, I, I put a video of what I do with the fish in, um, in actually uh, YouTube. My son did one. That's pretty. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sound. Did, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, I can bad. hear you. It's. It was, yeah, it was a call that I received. Um, oh, one of them. Uh, actually, I'm very surprised that I've been talking for 28 minutes and that, that was the only call. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, half of it is for my trend shipping deal and the other half is for uh, my tanks, my personal tanks in uh, the tanks that I keep uh, fish, like more sensitive fish that needs uh, resting, like discus and stuff like that. I normally leave them overnight before I ship them out, uh, just because you know they they need that extra that extra care. Okay, I'm I'm gonna interrupt you right here. Try to remember where you are. So after this question, you can you know you can you can pick right up. But when you mentioned sensitive, more sensitive fish, and you said discus, now. Discus are on this wave right now. People are getting into discus and they're having these discussions about uh, how hard it is to keep discus in. For you to, to get a shipment of discus in, hold them, maintain before you repackage and ship back out, what does that look like with a fish that's, that's that sensitive? <laughs> Listen, uh, Hank, there is no such a bad fish <laughs> everything is on the packing 
and on the acclimation. Uh, shout out to uh, Devante. He's, he's watching. Uh, it's <laughs> it is um, it is actually how they pack it. You know, if they do a poor job packing, the fish will get to me very bad. And then you will have to, you will have to hold it for a day or two before you ship it out. Uh, most of the times, obviously these people are professional, but most of the times they do really good and they starve the fish and clean water. So when the fish gets to me, it's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. So what I do is, if there's a puncture bag or something, then I repack. If the bags are prestige, then empty it out, change about 50% of the water. I normally use edge water that I have. I have a, a tank of uh, 400 gallons at home that is constantly running in, in the filter. And uh, I use that water and I change 50% of that water back. Reoxygen, close and on the way. That's it. I have I have chances where individuals have purchased the fish and they get to me very, very stressed. On the side, discus on the side, really bad. So those you have to repack completely and let it rest at home. So for those, I normally have, extra, those are the extra tanks that I have, just in case something happens. I always have clean tanks at home empty for the fish that could probably have a trouble in shipping and I need to get it, you know, to uh, to their location uh, the next day then. Okay. So what is, let's say I was looking for fish for me, myself, personally. What is what would be the process? Um, do would I be the person to reach out to Thailand or wherever, or and get a get pricing before I would contact you, or would I contact you about a particular type of fish, and you get the information and we go back and forth? Okay, it all depends. Uh, I have people that have actually asked me first, hey, where can I find this fish? Or do you know anybody that sells this fish? Then I, I get them to that seller. So they can talk back and forth with the seller, get a price and everything from the seller. Uh, some of the people already have talked to sellers and they already have bought the fish. And then they call me and ask me, Oh, I have this fish from this person. Uh, how much is it? Or how, you know, how can I do this? How can I... It all depends. It all depends. So it, it works for, for me, it works both ways. I, if I know check, somebody, check, check, if, so, check, if you check. call me now, I can't hear you. Uh, it's delayed. It's delayed. I lost someone over here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Hold on. Let me do some backup here. I can't. I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Hold on. Let me do some backup here. I can't. I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Hold on. Let me do some backup here. I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Oh my goodness, I can't hear you. 
All right, I know what to do. I know what to do. I'm coming back in, people, but I'm going to come in from a different angle. It's a lot of feedback. All right, all right. How about now? I can hear you now. I can hear you. Okay, okay. It's always good to know how to back it up. All right. Now, I missed all of that that you was telling me. <laughs> okay. So I start from the beginning again. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, so uh, it actually, it, it works uh, two ways. One, you find your fish, you search for it, you find it, you look to uh, to all the, uh, the people, sellers, and uh, find the fish you want. Uh, talk to him and everything and, you know, find out price, shipping, everything from, uh, let's say, uh, Thailand or Indonesia. And then you can contact me and say, oh, look, I'm buying from this uh, seller, this fish. Uh, how much is it? You know, whatever. So I will let you know. Uh, it also works uh, on the other end. Uh, you call me directly and you ask me, Joe, I'm looking for this particular fish. Have you, do you know anybody that has them? Have you worked with uh, anybody that has them? And then I'll tell you yes or no, or yes, uh, contact this person. Uh, and then, you know, it's it's the way. It's, it's the simplest, simplest way to do it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I wanted people to know that, you know, what the process was that don't really, that has never dealt with this type of yeah a lot of people don't know uh, what the process is and uh, sometimes a lot of the sellers even let's say ebay seller or aquabid uh, seller any of those uh, places um what happened is the actual seller don't know what trench you're going to use so they they actually put a month for the delivery Let's say you buy now and they tell you May 15. That does not mean that you're going to get your fish 50 in, you know, in a month or that the fish will be traveling for a month. I get that question every single time. Oh, I buy the fish now and it says that it's for next month. Is it going to take all this time for the fish to be in the bag? It's going to die. No, it will not. The reason why they do it and they put that such a long time is because they don't know who you're going to use because you might not be selecting me as a trench shipper. You might be selecting somebody else and they have not know, they don't know exactly. So that's why they give out that lot of time for shipping. Okay. 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 So, I mean, it, it still could be just a matter of, of uh, a week or so or some days after the trench, they find out who the trench ship is and make the transaction. And yeah, they, so they, what they I normally in, what I what I normally recommend people is uh when people contact me, I recommend them to actually buy the fish and on the comments on the payment or on the comment, let's say on eBay message, whatever, tell them please send to Joel Fernandez. They already have my information, they already know who I am, they already know when is my next shipment, but I always encourage people to remind them you know shipment is april 24. so actually today they are packing over there and i will get it on monday okay. monday afternoon so you know i tell people the day and so that they can remind the uh, the actual seller uh you know of the day and everything just in case just in case 
because uh, you know some of them forget or the fish might not be ready by that time. You know, they 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 do have a little process with the fish and especially with the big fish. Okay, 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 okay. And what would be what would be the difference in if you were ordering a lot of small fish? Or if you were ordering big fish, you know how you have the monster fish people as opposed to the the nano. Well, fish a lot of a lot of the uh, small fish, I normally send priority mail. Uh, I mean, I bet I could be in a bag for I don't know six, seven, eight days with no problem. Gop is the same way, uh, so so they can actually be okay. Now, monster fish. I recommend everybody to go uh, either overnight or uh, go uh, cargo, depending how sensitive that fish is. So let's say I have a person that is ordering uh, entity that noise or uh, um, a Santa eel, something something big and pricey. I encourage them to do uh, cargo. Cargo might be the same price sometimes for uh, the uh, overnight or sometimes it's cheaper depending uh, but it's always better because you will get the fish the very next morning or at least in the uh, few uh, let's say 12 hours 14 hours right after I ship it out so it all depends what fish is it how you know how I send it uh, you know I during the cold I always recommend overnight it is very expensive or fortunately but you know a lot of these places like uh, i had a lady uh, that had a, a fish and she wanted a priority i told her look it's actually negative 20 in your place that fish that fish will not survive i mean even with it uh, overnight you know if you don't pick it up fast it will die uh and she's like oh i want a priority i don't have money i say look you know uh, then don't don't buy the fish because it's not going to work. You're going to get a dead fish, and then you're going to create a problem for me and the, the seller, obviously. So, you know, a lot of people don't understand that they really don't. And a lot of people, you tell them that, and they say, no, no, I want a priority. And they send you the the, the, the cost for priority shipping, and obviously the, the fish die. And then they say, oh, the fish die. Well, I told you. Unfortunately, you know, I told you, and I told you three, four times. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's it's very hard. It is very hard to work with uh with customers uh, uh, that actually you know it's it's a life it's a life fish. So yeah, every, every life matters. So you know, it's 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 very hard. It, it is hard. Some people and don't it's understand. Good. It's good for you to tell them because I mean you know you have some people out there that even though they go to the go through the process, they actually want it. They spend the money, but it's like they're looking. If there's a possibility for something to go wrong, you know, it's like they're looking for it almost. I'm like, why roll the dice like that? Exactly. You know, I mean, and 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 when when uh, when you have a, a big fish, that's what I tell everybody. If you order a fish that is going to cost you a hundred, two hundred dollars, why do you want to spend shipping priority shipping? If you buy that fish, man, just spend the extra whatever a hundred dollars more and get it overnight and especially for big fish and expensive fish yeah i got people that have bought uh betas for a hundred 150 dollars one beta and they get it here and then they say oh send me priority uh priority shipping uh, the cheapest one I say okay i mean it's up to you <laughs> yeah it is you'll be surprised You'll be really surprised. <laughs> they don't have to be important fish, man. Because I was, you know, I was, I'm, well, I'm still a better dude. I have a uh, wild types now. But um, when I was doing the fancies, I had, I bought this Hellboy. One, one fish for me, you know, it was like $150 for that one fish, which was like, man, you know, that's crazy. But it was like directly from the seller to me. You know, I couldn't imagine, you know, trying to have that fish sent to me from somewhere. No, yeah, I, I mean, I I have I have fish. Uh, I I mean, I I got fish uh, like the uh, probably a month and a half ago, two months ago. I brought in a, a bunch of uh, 
platinum uh, platinum uh, guards uh, Florida guards uh, or or uh, crocodile guards, and uh, I mean they're expensive, and 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 you ask people how you want to ship, uh, priority please. <laughs> no, don't do that, please don't do that. So uh, some people listen, some others don't, but you know it's it's my money. I know better than you are. <laughs> definitely definitely some some of them are like that some of them are like that but always trust you know the always trust the expert i people would ask me it's okay with priority yes it is okay with priority because i you know i myself use uh isolated uh, con um coolers so the actual fish is not in cut up uh cardboard or uh wrapping newspaper they are actually isolated but no matter what if i'm sending to a 20 degrees weather that fish is going to suffer if you don't do uh overnight right so right. you know it, it, it's like that but you know i'm glad a lot of people will uh, listen to me i have i do have a lot of people that actually uh know me for four or five years already doing this and and they just send the fish uh, to me without even telling me oh i got fish your way or anything like that uh i got good customers i mean i'm telling you good good customer i got all the customer that they're not aware that they have to pay shipping in the united states you have to explain that other people will tell you this is a rip off i'm gonna cancel give me my, my money I don't have your money. I'm not the seller. I'm just the person who got it here in the United States. Oh, why did it went to you? You know, when I bought it in eBay, they have my address. Why did it went to you? You still eat my fish? I'm like, no, I don't steal nothing. The fish has to come through me because I'm a licensed transshipper. I have to use my license to go get your fish. So it's, and you see everything. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard. Is this a scam? I have not received my fish in ten days. Do you tell the 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 seller that you know you got the you got the chipper and that it's going to be me? Oh no! Well, please tell. You know it is hard, very hard. Deborah Lewis says some people don't give uh, you don't give you shipping options. It is what it is. I am sure their ratings are better because of someone wanting to be cheap at the end uh yeah some of the trend shippers they do not give you an option they just send it overnight and that's it they don't give you another option uh i like to give the option of uh uh priority and especially since the weather it's it, you know when the weather is good uh i always give that uh just in case i mean it's it's there and it's good i mean most of the times it's two days uh a lot of the other if you leave uh, far from the city then it's three days but you know i haven't i haven't had troubles with uh priority shipping okay okay have you yeah, ever they, thought they of um have you ever thought of uh you selling like you having a shop or i have uh i actually i actually opened up a a company a corporation about six months ago uh i wanted to do some uh importance and being be a uh, uh a distributor here in 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 texas uh the reason why i haven't finished that project or actually started that project is because uh, uh right now since i dedicated i actually uh after the uh the three car garage i actually got uh the fourth the fourth room in my home also for trend shipping so uh you know it's already certified and everything uh the, the the place is already certified so it, it is actually hard for me to to move to another location start paying all the bills when i am actually doing it from here i mean yeah. right now i have yeah. about 100 tanks between small and large tanks uh in there so it's it's pretty much it's pretty much uh, what I need. Um, I mean, it, I can always grow more if I do grow more, which I probably do. Uh, then I will have to set up a, a, a shop with, uh, you know.
you know, like a big uh, shop with the tanks and stuff like that to do uh, the uh, the importings and stuff, and then uh, a little place within that, a little place to do the trench shipping, because I like to do both. I like to do the trench shipping and uh, the imports. Okay, okay, that's cool. So, which um, what would you tell uh, young Joel? At the beginning of this, when you first started, what would you tell uh, yourself? You know, your now you knowing what you know. What would you tell your when you first started? Like things that you didn't know, and you have to search uh, a lot more than I did. You have to do research. Uh, I didn't. I actually, I actually talked to the guy in Indonesia, uh, Joti. Uh, a good shout out to him. He was uh, he's my first uh, supplier from there. And uh, when I talked to him and he told me, yes, we can do it. That's it. I didn't think about it. Just went ahead. And uh, that's probably when I got everything, uh, all those obstacles at the beginning, actually the first day. After that, it was just smooth all the way around. Uh, I never had a problem again after that. But that first uh, shipment was was very 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 hard, uh, very stressing. Very yeah, it was it was stressing me uh, hearing what you had to deal with. So that I mean that, clock, that timer that was so. If you had paid attention to the time of being there during the process of you entering the information, could you have reset it while you were going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You reset it while you are putting in your input. You just go click and keep going. Now, obviously they don't tell you this, but after many years you find out. Uh, right now I probably don't use not even a minute of that 45 minutes timer. <laughs> <laughs> because right now I have everything almost ready uh, from previous uh, imports. So I just gotta click, 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 and that's it. So now it's easy. Okay. Okay. That's cool. that first one. Those those first few were the really really one uh, the really uh, the ones that actually got me. I mean, that I remember when I did the second one, I was going at the clock like this. <laughs> Every ten minutes, I will not go down. I will not let it down more than ten minutes. I will click, click, click. Oh, it's. Man. It is. It is crazy. It is crazy. But everything happens, I guess, for a reason. Uh, I have a lot of people that ask me, oh, how can I do this? How can I do that? And I go, listen, you know, you have to first you get to do your research. And because I cannot transfer you all that I've been through. I mean, I've been from plane that being delayed and I have to repack a thousand fish. Everything. Everything. Mm. Yeah, Ooh. definitely. It's, oh. it's a very interesting, uh, I can tell you one thing, I work, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very, very, very happy, and uh, I, I actually work in my hobby. So I, I work in what I do. I, I take it personal because I like it, I do it, you know, and it's not like, People that will have to go work for 12, 13 hours a day, uh, get paid, I don't know, $20, $30 an hour, but they don't like the job they they, they get, they just, that they choose. I like it. I don't care. I don't care if I make 10 cents in, in, in the fish. I just like it because, you know, I bring the fish, I get to see all the fish, and it's impressive what you can see in those bags. I mean, you see people that actually buy fish for $30 that they're so common that I will not, I will not, you will see it here for 10 cents. Yeah. But they yeah. still, but they still pay $30 because they saw a picture and they love the picture. Uh, you have people that have bought uh, macrostomas. Uh, that's $150 uh, fish. hundred, you know, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> so, so if you, if you, are you into uh, wilds now? Yeah, I have uh, some chinoides. I have some fry right over here, uh, ready to ready to grow up as we speak. Um, 
See, if macrostoma, if it wasn't for the RO water, I'd have some macrostoma, but I'm not, I'm not even going to put myself through that. I, I will, I will, once we finish here, we'll give you the contact of a person. He's uh, out of Thailand and he raises in regular water in Thailand. Mr. Uh, Mr. Armadillo. Okay, okay, okay. Very good guy. Price is very, very good. And you get them very small and they're already adapted to a uh, regular tap water from there or whatever water they have over there. It doesn't have you don't need you don't need to have it RO, you don't need to do anything like that. Anything special. Okay. Yes. Well, yes, please. <laughs> Hey, that's all, that's all about me, all the connects. Yes, please. Yes, please. I'm not even tripping. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, hey. I have another I have another import by the uh, the first week of uh, of uh, the last week of May, May or first week of June. Actually, the first week of June I will be off, but I guess the second week uh, from Indonesia and the guy has basically any any wild better that you can dream of i need all the information <laughs> there you go i need all the information man 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 that's what i'm talking about hey yeah. anybody got uh oh i didn't brought something up on the screen here hey we got any more questions anybody got any questions Come on with them, Coach. The time is ticking down. We have four something, minutes. It was uh, it was a question there that I couldn't read it. It's something in the industry, that one. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people do that. And, and when you're already bringing in fish, it's easier to just bring in, obviously, more, more uh, quantity uh to be uh, a wholesaler definitely uh, but obviously the cost is it's a lot ah. <laughs> 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 hey he he listen he dare me he dare me not to say anything but he's my puppy i call him puppy <laughs> he's, he's my puppy chulo hey I love you a lot, Devante. I love you a lot. Yeah, I really late. He's really good uh, people. A big shout out. A big shout out to uh, Devante, TFK, uh, DFK, to Sue, uh, Evans uh, is uh, her husband. Everybody that I have met uh, on uh, on the uh, uh, expo. I mean, everybody. Everybody. They've been uh, really good people. A lot of good people around. So. It is actually uh, various. Did the Bonte uh, go to the expo? He owed me that one. I can't see that last question. I can see. Oh yeah, yeah. It is. It is possible. They have. They have. Uh, they, once once you have your license and you start bringing it in, you can be a wholesaler now. The problem is this. A lot of people, a lot of people, uh, they don't want to pay uh, what the fish is cost. They think that because another another person have it cheaper, they they will be able to, to buy cheaper. And that's not always the case. That depends on how many boxes of fish you bring. So... For example, if I bring in one box of fish, oh, he's coming next time. Um, if if I bring in one box of fish and that box of fish will cost me, let's say $600 total to bring it in into the United States, I will have to divide whatever is in that box with the, uh, with the $600. But if I bring in 30 or 40 boxes, I still have to pay that $500. So yes there is the, the more that you bring the better it is and a lot of these people don't understand sometimes they they you know a lot of people think that like me and devante will bring in uh i don't know 
seven, eight, nine boxes between me and him, sometimes more. But a lot of people think that uh, that I go out of uh, Rio Negro in the winter time it was a lot of fun. Probably, probably. Uh, Lunatic, uh, that, that guy is, uh, he knows, he knows a lot of stuff. Uh, the one posting the questions. Um, definitely, it is, uh, it is hard, uh, especially with the rainy season down from, uh, from uh, um, Brazil. Um, so, you know, we, we actually cut a lot of the, the cost down, me and Devante, when we bring in more boxes. But a lot of the times, you know, fish are not available. We cannot get them. So, you know, you bring in as much as you can in that time. Right, right. And, you know, <laughs> something for nothing, don't, that don't really exist. You know, people, I mean, if, if, you t if you're taking a step, you know that um, you're going to have to pay for quality regardless. You're going to have to pay for what, you, you know, what you're getting. And, and shortcuts in the long run, especially when you're dealing with um, things of such importance, Shortcuts don't usually end up being good in the first place. Correct. That is correct. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there is you have to do your research on fish. A lot of people will buy fish because they like it, the color or whatever, and they really don't know if it's an aggressive fish or what kind of fish is it, if it needs uh, warm water. Yeah, I'm also getting a, a uh, an, an African shipment very soon, uh, most likely from uh, Grayness in uh, in uh, by Africa or Congo over there. So that's that's going to be the next one that we and me and Devante uh, are planning to do Congo and uh, for some puffers and uh, uh, African uh, arowanas uh and also um vietnam vietnam taiwan those are key countries that we're we're bringing in very soon very good well okay man that's our hour mark right there and i gotta take my my youngest to her job but, okay uh, I, I got to go back to a here. barbecue. Hey, I, I hate I'm holding you off from that, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, I told you, I came I came to sit down uh, inside the house and look, I have to do it in my car, unfortunately. But, hey, it's in the parking lot. Everything starts in the parking lot or in the garage. Right, right. I'm glad that you are a guest to show this side of the industry to people. I had to give up the hobby. Due to disability, but I studied fish. Oh, okay. okay, little kid. That's I'm glad That's I could good. bring him. Glad I could bring him. You know, I I gave I prefaced early on before I started this stream what I was actually trying to do. You know, on these Saturday streams, and um, man, you, you and Devonte were were the epitome of of the my vision. I mean, and I want to use you two guys to help me. You know, find you know, integral people that I can bring on here, you know, just for moments such as this. This is such a jewel for people in the fish hobby who all they know is going to the LFS and saying, man, that's pretty. You know, I think I want to open Definitely. a fish room. I, I think I want to turn my fish room into um, a breeding for profit. Then when you hit that aspect of it, now you've opened, a, you know, opened yourself up to having to deal with import export trans shipping i tell you i tell you one more last thing hank uh, i i've done breeding and i have done importing there is no way that you will be you make more money doing the import than actually breeding yourself yeah i i bred i bred uh unless unless it's a very 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 high quality fish that you cannot get in United States, then you do breeding, obviously selective breeding. But if not, do import. And the reason why is because breeding, you take tank, time, and money with food. 
once that fish that you have spawned there will reach three or four months, by that time you already spend <laughs> yeah, you're probably a lot of a lot of money in there. So <laughs> you might not be getting a lot of much profit on that. I mean, yeah. if you like it like I do, I do breeding. I love breeding. I breed, I have bred betas, uh apistos, apistoramas are my favorite, you know, probably of all. Um live airs. I have actually I have a pair of uh 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 some cichlids um windmiller and i show the vante they, they were supposed to go in they were supposed to go to the vantes and i kept them and uh a month later they start spawning so i have a, a i have a clutch about i don't know 50 young uh small windmiller at home uh geophagus yeah faggots <laughs> yep and he's like oh you <laughs> but yeah yeah i told him i give it to him later on i'm gonna spend a couple of times and see uh yeah texas has a hello mary something texas has a, a, a hard uh, hard water especially this area in in dallas very good for cichlids rock hard <laughs> Very, oh. very hard water. I mean, oh, my right. pH, my pH is probably uh, seven, eight, eight, four, eight, two. It's incredible, incredible. Ooh. But yeah, in that tank with aeration and everything, pH goes down. So okay. yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Well, all right. All right. Well, we'll I don't take uh, we'll more of your time. If you have any more questions, you let me know. Hey, and, and hang in there. Don't 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 hit the the end or shut off button. I'm gonna end so I can get this information for you from you after this. No, no, no. That's fine. That's, no, no, I'm not. I'm not planning to leave. It's just right, that if you have any good. more questions, y'all be good. Love each other. Take care of those fish, and we are out till next week. <laughs>